Well, I started taking pictures back in 73, 74, but I got involved with the hip-hop culture in 77, 78, and it's just been a blessing ever since then. Yeah. So you were taking all these pictures, so no one else was really doing it back then, were they? Well, no one was taking pictures the way I was, because I was attached part of the Cold Press Brothers, one of the you know, pioneer pillars of the hip-hop culture. I mean, there were other photographers like Jamel Shabazz, Ernie Panicoli, Marty Cooper taking pictures, but they were taking pictures of specific, like, graffiti and stuff like that. I pretty much just started taking pictures because I was part of the, the hip-hop scene. Yeah. So you were really connected. And it seemed like in those days, in hip-hop, everybody did everything, right? It wasn't, if you were an MC, you probably were a DJ, too. Oh, Billy, listen, our crew consisted, I mean, besides the photographer, uh, tape master recording, you know, we had our own security, and, you know, we did everything ourselves, from loading the van, going to each venues, producing, uh, uh, just, you know, public relations work. We were, you know, a tightly knit group that did everything. Yeah, and you just saw this whole thing blow up. Like 1979, 1979, we were talking here earlier, there's a whole bunch of guys in the house who have a lot of respect for you. They were uh, trying to steal you. trying to steal my copy of Born in the Bronx. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just sort of look, looking at, wondering over, like, the flyers from back then. It was an innocent time, right, in hip-hop? Well, it was an innocent time. It was a fun time. You had a bunch of teenagers trying to make a mark, you know, trying to get away from all the devastation of the Bronx at that time. And know, let's face it, the, the Bronx was like a burned out. It was like after the Second World War, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you heard stories of people from Europe used to come and film in the Bronx because it reminded them of burnt out, you know, bombed out Berlin right. during World War Two. Yeah. But, you know, here you had your group of kids trying to make a, you know, get away from the gangs and the drugs and, and using music. But none of us knew, at least I didn't know, that 30 years later it would be a billion dollar industry. Right. You know, back then we didn't have the internet, we didn't have the magazines, radio shows, TV shows. So, you know, Buddy Esquire used to take his talent and make flyers, use my photographs, and that was our promotion with the five boroughs and Tri State. So, with all these photos, what were you doing? You, did, you didn't publish them before, did you? In any other book? No, no, no. I mean. Sporadically, my photos would show up in like different books, like in Yes, Yes, Y'all, they use a few of them, and uh, Hip Hop Immortals, they used one of them. But, you know, this is the first comprehensive book. I like to call it a scrapbook of, of Hip Hop's early days. Right. And you see a full, you know, barrage of, of my photos. Now, for people who are into the whole art of photography, what kind of camera did you use? You always did black and white shots, right? <laughs> They, the reason why I only shot, you know, I shot some color and oh, some slides back then, but basically more black and white because I was a teenager on a fixed income. I couldn't afford anything else. So I developed all my photographs in my own darkroom at the time. Wow. And then the pictures were where? Were they sort of in an attic for a long time? Pretty much because I had, I dealt with some of my own personal demons and I disappeared off the scene for a while and sold my equipment. But, you know, thank God, you know, for my family, they saved my negatives. And it wasn't until about five, six years ago, I just collected everything and started digitizing them. And next thing you know, I mean, you know, got a European photo exhibit been to Japan and London. The book just came out two months ago and it's been a blessing. Photography has been my first love. I did, you know, two years of, of college, the School of Visual Arts, had to drop out, couldn't afford it, dealing with the demons, you know, went away for a few years and, you know, that's how I got into the medical field and that's why I'm a paramedic today with the fire department, but, you know. In the Bronx, right? It, yeah, in the Bronx. Born in the Bronx is a really good book. It's got how many photos of yours and all in there? Well, my, I have, you know, this was a family affair. I could not have done this book without the pioneers and also some of the other documenters like Charlie Ahern and Henry Shalfont. Right. Charlie Ahern uh, contributed about the five color shots that are there and Henry Shalfont contributed two shots, but you know, 95% of the photographs are mine. And the cover is yours? 
is my office. That's why yeah. Charlie Chase. It's two people actually juxtaposed, right? Yeah. Because I was looking at it. Pinky on top. It's and the man Charlie with three Chase's hands. hands on the book. It looks like the the monster with three arms. Look. <laughs> Doesn't it? So it's it okay. Does it, it throws them for a loop. Right. It's an optical yeah. illusion. I like I like the book a lot, and then I really like and the guys who are here from Embedded Crew are commenting on again on the flyers. So who came up with all those old flyers? I mean, I got you know because a bunch of people worked on this, right? This book is yeah, a collaboration. This book, this book was done, you know. Besides the pioneers, you know, Jeff Chang contributed to the book, and then you have Johan Kugelberg, who is a Swedish collector, who is the editor. Who befriended me about four years ago? I met the Grandmaster Kaz, and he compared my photographs towards the, the Lost Dead Sea Scrolls. But it's and, true. You know, he collect. Thank you. He collected, you know, all these flyers and album covers, and you know, he was like asking around where are the photographs. And Grandmaster Kaz introduced me to him, and that was the me the missing puzzle. To his archives, but I mean the buddy Ar buddy Esquire flyers are just incredible. Yeah, and what do you got? Some in there from Roosevelt High. Yeah. What was that like? Oh, it's awesome! Awesome. I mean the flyers <clears throat> show that, and then the the pictures. You know, I mean those are the venues we performed in. You know, all the high school, all the boys clubs in the street. And it was just awesome. You know, I, I tell high school kids today that, you know, this is where all hip-hop started and they don't believe it. Yeah, it's a trip. It is a trip. So you, you, you remember, you're in the Bronx 70s, early 80s, and you remember <clears throat> then when they were starting to make Style Wars and Wild Style? Yes. What was that yes. like? What was, how, was that, how was that treated, like, from a Bronx perspective? Well, it was it was kind of odd because you know here you had people like Henry Schaff and Charlie Ahern who weren't from the Bronx, who were from the downtown scene, the Soho scene, coming up to the Bronx and, and making these you know documentary short films, you know big movies back then. Right. And you know I was part of the Wild Stuff film. You know if you look, there's one part in the in the Dixie Club you can see me taking pictures behind the scenes, which is fun. But, you know, again, you know, we were a bunch of teenagers, you know, venturing into no man's land, not knowing where this was going, and it was just beautiful. Yeah. And then when hip-hop went from the Bronx to, to the downtown scene, it was just incredible. Right. It's amazing, like, when you go back and you look at the photographs, or when you look at the footage of the film, of the trains alone. I mean, I could just sit and look at the MTA from 1979 for hours on end. <laughs> so, so you must appreciate the the cover of Born in the Bronx, which is a 1973 subway map. Yeah, I, you know what? A lot of people probably don't even get that far. It's like a little trick, a hidden bonus when you take off. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It, it's a poster, and it and it, it points out all the the venues and spots that hit. Yeah, I love those things. It. Awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. But it's great the way the history has sort of finally been written about hip-hop, you know? Not sure, but someone was doing like a sort of audio, a few people are doing it, of the audio walking tour of the Bronx, right. uh, the, based on the subway line. So it's a really cool thing that it's all been, been archived here. So what do you got lined up? Have you been taking photographs again? Oh, I still take pictures. Um, right now, I'm, I'm the New York photographer for Hip Hop Connection. Uh, one of the oh, the UK magazine? Yeah, the UK magazine. That's a great magazine, isn't it? Oh, it's a great, great, great magazine. And, you know, I'm the, the, the house photographer for Lehman College up here in the Bronx that does some great, great shows there. And I shoot for Retina, which is one of the largest uh, stock agencies in the city. So I've been pretty busy. That's you good. Know. That's good. Yeah. Do you want to you want to do any special mentions to any people? There's a lot of actually contributors. You mentioned Jeff Chang, but also I think Fable is in there too. Grand Wizard Listen, Theodore. I just you know I want to thank everybody from Johan Kugelberg, the editor, from Grandmaster Kaz, Bambada, yeah. Fable, Grand Wizard Theodore, uh, uh, Mayor One Three Nine, JDL, Grand Wizard Theodore again, DJ Disco Wiz, the first Latino DJ in hip hop. Yeah. I mean, you know, Buddy Esquire, Tony Tone, Easy AD, 
you know, this is a family affair. The book was done with, with everybody's input, and it, it, it couldn't have been done any other way. Yeah. Well, I love it. It's worth it, I mean, on so many levels, just like a, his, a history book of New York. I think it would be fun or interesting to get, like, the photographs of the Bronx. I mean, inside the front cover, there's, like, a whole block, and it's just all bombed out. Like that shot, that shot was shot at Charlotte Street, which was visited by President Carter and Reagan back yeah, in the 70s. Yeah, which was a very symbolic thing, right? It was like Yeah, a, it is. Yeah. yeah. The seventies, New York City. Yeah. So, what in that exact spot now? What is there now? Right now, there's there's private housing there. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a totally you, different Bronx now, right? Totally, totally different Bronx. I mean, the Bronx that that it should should have been back then, and lots of housing, lots of private, you know, private homes, which is good. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you very much for sharing your time and also the photographs which are it's the history you wrote the book so, here Billy thank you for inviting me on the show and I'm here and thank you for the kind words and of the course. book